Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Josh Redstone and I have been uh, approached to take over this class, which is Language and Communication, as per my announcement on CU Learn, uh, which I put up, mm, well, as I record, this is as of yesterday. Um, anyhow, uh, yes, I've been um, asked about taking over this class, uh, and I'm sure you're all aware of the reason by now. Unfortunately, Dr. Wayne's mother passed away recently. So um, I am keeping Dr. Wayne in my thoughts. Um, we share an office together, or we shared an office together before COVID happened. Um, and um, and uh, my interactions with her were always very pleasant. Um, and uh, she, she's just great, so I'm keeping her in my thoughts. This is a very difficult time for her. I hope you'll all do the same. Um, uh, but we do have to carry on with this class, and that is why I'm here. Uh, tentatively, it looks like, uh, you know, things are not written in stone yet. However, it's looking more and more certain by the day that I will be teaching this class. So I've decided to try and get up to speed with the materials, uh, and to begin delivering lectures. So I thought what I would do today is firstly introduce myself and then go over some uh, housekeeping things, um, specifically with regard to the essay. Um, so firstly, yes, I've already told you my name. I'm Dr. Josh Redstone. Um, <clears throat> I, um, I have a background in philosophy. I did my undergraduate and my graduate degrees in philosophy. Uh, for my undergraduate, I tended to specialize in a kind of a, like an almost like a history of philosophy kind of thing. That was the uh, that was the um, the slant of the department anyway, uh, where I did my undergraduate. But I got more interested in philosophy of mind uh, as I proceeded through my studies, and I I continued in that vein uh, for my master's degree, uh, which I completed at Carleton University. Um, and then I changed gears a bit and I decided to do my PhD in cognitive science and I finished my PhD last year and I have been teaching ever since. Um, so uh, that's me. My areas are um, mostly to do with mind, uh, philosophy of cognitive science and the intersection between those two fields and uh, fields like social robotics and artificial intelligence. I'll be happy to tell you more if any of you want to pick my brain about this later. It's, it's all very interesting stuff, um, but other than, other than what kind of occurs at the intersection with language and communication and AI, so we're talking things like thought experiments like the Chinese room or perhaps the Turing test, other than that stuff, this is not really my area. Uh, but I have uh, TA'd in similar courses to this before, and I'm enjoying reading through the material so far, and I'm going to do my best to communicate that material to you clearly and effectively. Uh, but if you want to pick my brain about any of my other interests, um, feel free to send me an email. I am a busy guy these days, but I will get back to you sooner or later. All right. Well, that's it for the introduction of myself. Um... What else should we talk about before we talk about the essay? One thing, uh, before I forget, uh, I owe a big thank you to our teaching assistant, Will, um, who has done the first two lectures for this class. Uh, while we were looking for somebody to take over these teaching duties, uh, Will went ahead and got on top of that, which uh, means I have a little bit less catching up to do and he has my eternal gratitude, and uh, I hope he has your gratitude as well. Um, will will also be doing a lot of the marking, um, uh, as well as setting up some of your quizzes, and I will have more to say about your quizzes shortly. For now, all I will say is that given that last week's lectures were only made available to you yesterday, on uh, Sunday that is, uh, and this week's lectures may be a few days late, I will probably have to uh, reevaluate the quiz schedule. Uh, but once those quizzes start to become available, I will let you know via announcements on CU Learn. So please check those announcement forums regularly. Please check your emails regularly as well, because this is going to be my main means of communication with you as we kind of uh, get through this hectic um, change of command, as it were. Uh, what else? Hmm. 
Well, I don't plan on deviating uh, very much from Dr. Wayne's uh, plans, at least when it comes to the material that we're going to cover. So all of the readings in the syllabus are still going to be read. Um, I will still lecture on those. Uh, there is a planned guest lecture at the end of the semester. Um, we're still going to go ahead with that as well. So nothing is really changing material-wise. What is going to be changing is, on the one hand, um, maybe a few of the deadlines. We may have to be a little flexible with those, uh, as I already mentioned, quizzes and so forth. But I will keep you apprised of any and all changes that I make um, to that stuff. Uh, wherever I depart from the course outline, I will post an announcement to let you all know. And um, the other thing that will change, obviously, is my mode of delivery. Um, usually, as you can see from this YouTube channel, that this is where I deliver my lectures. So I won't be using Big Blue Button for most of the lectures. I'll be using this YouTube channel. And of course, I will put this video and all of the other videos in a playlist so that it's organized and you can easily access whatever video lectures you need to access. Links to the video lectures will also be posted on CU Learn. Now, um, what else? What else? Another change is that I will be using my Discord server for my office hours. Now, those will be by appointment only. So I'm not having uh, a regular, you know, one hour a week where students can just drop in. I'm going to do things by appointment because I'm fairly busy between uh, teaching this class and teaching my other class. So I'd like to do that. Uh, I'd like to do the office hours by appointment. You can email me. My email is available on CU Learn. Uh, email me to set up an appointment and we'll pick a day and time and we can have a little virtual meeting on my Discord server. So please join that server if you haven't already. The link to do that is also on CU Learn. So let's see, we've covered introductions, we've covered some housekeeping stuff, some small changes. Um, now I suppose it's time to talk about the essay assignment. All right, so um, if you notice on the course outline in week three, uh, the paper topics and general instructions for the paper are supposed to be given this week. And I thought that I would kind of make this into its own lecture, um, uh, in addition to introducing myself, which we've already gotten out of the way. So now we can talk about your topics for your paper, the topics you'll be able to choose from, and how you should approach writing the paper. Um, stylistically, in terms of word limit, citation, so on and so forth. And by the way, all of this is uh, Dr. Wayne's. I've decided, once again, I'm just remind you that I'm, I'm, I've decided not to deviate too much from what she had in mind. So we're going to stick to this as closely as possible, all right? But in any case, um, we'll just read, read through this together and go through it together. And you can find this, by the way, under week three on uh, this class's page on CU Learn. So you can download a PDF copy of it for yourself if you need to refer back to it. But basically, the essays should be about approximately 1,500 words long. You won't be penalized for going, you know, a hundred words over or under, but please do not substantially go over or under the word limit, or you may be penalized. Uh, the paper is, of course, worth 30% of your final mark. Now, uh, it needs to be submitted on time, because as I'll talk about in a moment, you will be penalized um, a certain percentage per day that it's late. So do try and aim to have this handed in on time. Now, an additional 5% of your final grade uh, comes from the paper workshop, which will be an assignment that we're going to complete together. Now, um, <clears throat> I mentioned that most of my lectures will be up on YouTube. The exceptions will be interactive ones, which I'll probably still do over Big Blue Button. So um, the paper workshop will not be on YouTube. It'll be on Big Blue Button. And that will allow you to kind of get together into groups and workshop your ideas. And you'll have to hand in one of these um, paper workshop assignments as a group. And that's where this 5% will come from, based on your group mark for these assignments during the workshop. And the workshop is just going to be, you know, a workshop uh, for hashing out ideas, asking me questions, so on and so forth. So, your papers are going to be graded on style and content. 
Uh, and there is a grading rubric available on CU Learn. Um, and I highly recommend you refer to that before you begin writing so that you know uh, more about what is expected of your writing. So do refer to that rubric, uh, but in a nutshell, your papers need to demonstrate a strong grasp of the material that's uh, directly relevant to your paper topic. Um, you need to show awareness of background concepts, maybe a debate um, uh, uh, from which you've drawn this question or argument that you want to discuss in your essay. And speaking of argument, you have to articulate and defend a clear thesis statement. Now, um, defending a position um, requires, in this instance, uh, that you give the reader strong reasons for holding that position, or you give the reader uh, you give the reader reasons uh, to convince them of the correctness of your position. And you should consider and uh, respond to at least one objection in the course of doing so. Uh, of course, it's very important that you write clearly and concisely. Um, you need to be accurate with respect to your terminology. Um, and you have to treat the relevant material rigorously. So don't just gloss over details. You want to discuss what you discuss in a good deal of, of depth. Your essay topic uh, or your essay question, research question, whatever, doesn't have to be super broad. It can be narrow, but it should be deep. Um, so uh, if you need any further clarification on that, do let me know. Send me an email or message me on Discord. Um, as far as using other materials go, uh, as far as that goes, it's very important that you cite everything properly. I feel the same way about citation as she does. Uh, I don't care about what style you use, but keep it consistent. Don't start with APA and then switch to MLA and then switch to Chicago or something like that. Use the one you're most familiar with, right? If you're a philosopher or uh, somebody like that, you might be more familiar with APA, but other citation styles are perfectly fine. Just use them consistently and make sure you're using them correctly. Make sure also that whenever you directly paraphrase or directly quote that you um, place things in quotation marks and uh, give the page number, uh, last name of the author who wrote the work you're referencing and so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> you don't have to use external sources, but you can if you want. So you won't be expected to use any sources beyond the required readings for this class. Um, ah, the topics list. Well, as we'll see in a moment, the topics list covers material up to and including our lecture for Tuesday, July 18th. This is also the deadline for the paper, tentatively. I mean, I may, I won't make it sooner, but I may make it later, depending on how things unfold. But tentatively, it is due the 28th. So um, you can use whatever materials uh, for research, citation, whatever, up until that point. Um, now, that means, of course, that some of the topics that you might want to write about um, will be readings that we won't have covered up until the class of July 21st, which is the writing workshop. So read ahead if needed, and I will still post the relevant slides before all of these workshops. So if you want to go ahead and look at not only the readings, but the slides, uh, all of that will start to become available over the coming days. So you'll be able to read ahead uh, reading-wise and slide-wise, if you want to. As far as the format for the submission goes, you'll be submitting it as a Word document. So Microsoft Word uh, is the format that you must submit this in. It should be written in 12-point font. It should be double-spaced. You don't need a title page, but you need all of your important student information on your first page, like your name, your student number, the topic, uh, the date, the word count, all of that important information. You'll have to submit these directly on CU Learn tentatively uh, by July 28th at 11.59 p.m. Without an extension, any paper that's received after this date will be uh, will receive a 3% deduction per day for a maximum of five days. After that, you will receive a zero. So if you need an extension, you need to tell me, and you need to tell me before the deadline has passed. 
and the extension, um, you know, is for if you have some extenuating circumstances going on, illness, bereavement, uh, or something like that. I tend to be pretty accommodating when it comes to this stuff. Um, I don't accept excuses like, I forgot, obviously, but if there is something going on in your personal life and it's really affecting your ability to get this done, come and talk to me, uh, or not, well, email me, and we will figure something out. But don't be afraid to approach me, okay? Um, you need to ask me for an extension before the assignment is due. Not the day it is due, not after it's due, before it's due, okay? All right. You will be able to ask me uh, questions or set up office hour appointments for me. Of course, uh, consult the rubric as well if you need some assistance with the paper. Um, there are also some writing resources that Dr. Wayne has made available on CU Learn. I highly encourage you to check all of those out. Um, and we will be having a paper workshop as well. So the paper workshop will be, uh, well, again, tentatively, uh, Tuesday, July 21st. And it's a workshop that will support the writing process of your paper. So you uh, should have chosen a topic and kind of outline some ideas of how you're going to approach that topic. You don't have to have a draft of a paper ready. Uh, although if you do have a draft, that's great, and I'm happy to look at it. Um, but you do need to have a topic and a rough sketch or an outline. Um, so you'll work, uh, you'll work on some exercises during the workshop uh, where you'll draw from the rough materials that you bring to the workshop. Um, so these will be some independent activities and some peer-supported activities, a workshop assignment, um, all designed to support the writing of your paper. Now, finally, on to the topics. Well, uh, Dr. Wayne has provided four possible topics um, which you can use for your paper. So, uh, let's see. Uh, I quote from, from this section now. Following the guidelines indicated above, and in the writing resources posted to see you learn as well as the paper workshop, respond to one of the following four prompts in an argumentative paper. Okay, so that's what you have to do for the paper, considering everything else we've already discussed and, and that's been laid out uh, in this document. So, um, the first prompt, prompt number one, outline and defend one of the theories of linguistic meaning that we have examined in the course. This will include assessing at least one criticism of the theory we examined in the course and providing a response to that criticism. So this is a basic, straightforward, adjudicative paper where you're um, kind of assessing or adjudicating between two positions. So here, uh, the first position is going to be one of the theories of linguistic meaning that we cover. The other position is the criticism of it that you have to assess. Um, and then you want to respond to that criticism. So you want to set it up in a kind of they say, I say way. So uh, there's this theory um, of linguistic meaning, theory X. So-and-so says this about theory X, but I respond to so-and-so's comments or criticisms of theory X accordingly and then give your response. So it's like a discussion you're having with an imaginary opponent. You could think of it like that. Um, prompt number two. Drawing on relevant philosophers and using your own examples, explain the distinction between attributive and referential uses of definite descriptions, as well as the broader debate from which this distinction emerged. Outline and support a position in this debate. I won't say too much about this now, because uh, this stuff is actually the topic of our first couple of, uh, well, not our first couple of lectures, but the lectures for week three uh, deal with this sort of stuff. So um, <clears throat> I will be happy to answer questions about this as we proceed uh, through our discussion of these materials specifically. Um, prompt number three, drawing on an example or a set of examples and the views of two or three philosophers we have, we have examined in class, for example, Davidson and Grice, uh, which we will look at in this class. In fact, uh, I think we've already looked at Davidson uh, uh, in Will's second lecture, right? So, outline and defend an account of how communication is cooperative. So this could be a fun one. Uh, lots of interesting stuff to get into there. 
and you have to pick two or three philosophers who don't necessarily share the exact same theory of what language is or how it works, but two philosophers that agree on this point that communication is cooperative. Uh, so there'll be ample opportunity to pick some of those thinkers and discuss their ideas. Finally, using your own examples of malapropisms in action and drawing on his notions of prior and passing theory, explain how and why Davidson concludes that there is no such thing as a language as we tend to know it. Outline and defend your position on his view. Uh, this is fun. This, this, this would allow you to engage with a, um, a rather provocative idea, which again was just covered very well by Will in, uh, in his lecture on Davidson's paper. Um, so yeah, you can look at examples of malapropisms, you know, when speech kind of goes wrong, but people still understand what we say. Um, great examples of malapropisms come from a character named Tobias on, on a television show, Arrested Development. Um, if you want some really great malapropisms, watch that show. Uh, if you're looking for some examples of, of this kind of thing, right? Um, so outline and defend your position on uh, Davidson's view. So here you have to kind of explain Davidson's view that there is no such thing as language as we traditionally understand it and respond to that. So you have to outline fairly Davidson's position, respond to it. You can agree with it or maybe disagree with it, but your response should be uh, reasonable. Um, you know, your, your argument should be clear, concise, logical, free of fallacies, so on and so forth. Okay. So that is it for the topics and the, um, uh, the materials that Dr. Wayne has left you um, with regard to writing this essay. Now, um, if anyone has any further questions um, as they're working on the essay, let me know. Please reach out. Please don't be shy. I really like interacting with students, especially since nowadays we don't really have the opportunity for in-person interaction anymore due to COVID-19 and self-isolation and all of that. That's been not really that fun. Uh, so if you want to reach out to me via email or on Discord, please do so. Please don't be shy. Um, I will try my best to answer your questions. Now, uh, that is it for now. Uh, the next lecture will deal with um, Frege's paper, Sense and Reference as well as the first chapter of the textbook. The first chapter is very, very short. And I'll probably only go over some fundamental ideas in Frege's paper. There won't be any PowerPoint slides for you to worry about, but I do recommend that you take notes. Um, it will be very helpful if you uh, make physical copies of notes, whether you're typing out as you listen to my lecture, or if you're watching my lecture and writing it on uh, you know, paper with a pencil or pen. I do recommend taking notes. Even for subsequent lectures, uh, if you want to print out the PowerPoint slides, uh, they're going to be available on CU Learn in P PDF format. Print them out. Uh, make notes on them. Why not? It's a great way to help you assimilate the material. Otherwise, um, please let me know if you have any other questions. Again, I know this is a sudden change of plans for a lot of you, um, uh, but um, uh, I want to do my best to carry on teaching the course uh, the way that Dr. Wayne would have liked. I don't want to deviate too much from her plans. Um, and of course, uh, let's all keep Dr. Wayne in our thoughts, okay? Because, you know, um, she's going through a tough time. And um, she has my condolences, and I'm sure she has all of yours. And she's also been amazing with getting all of this material to me and to Will so that we can continue teaching the class. So my thanks go out to her. I, I appreciate how especially difficult this must be, but I really appreciate the work that she's done getting me ready to teach this class. I really appreciate the work that Will has done on preparing the first, um, or not the first twos, technically speaking, but the two lectures from last week. Will's done a fantastic job there, so thank you to him. And thank all of you as well. I want to thank you all for bearing with us while we get all of this sorted out. So, stay tuned for further news and announcements and further lectures as well. I've been Dr. Josh Redstone. You can call me Josh, by the way. There's no need to call me Professor. I'm not technically one. So call me Josh or Dr. Redstone. Um, please reach out if you have any questions or if you need any clarification on anything. 
and I will see you soon. I will see you next time for our lecture on Frege's paper, Sense and Reference, and on chapter one from the Lycan textbook. All right, talk to you soon.